Hello, and welcome to the Thematic Intelligence Podcast, a global data thematic intelligence with track over 100 tech, industry, ESG, and macro themes impacting all major sectors. I'm Martina Raveni, and today I'm joined by Aisha UK, uh, who is actually my colleague in the thematic team, and we're going to talk about ESG and the social aspect of it. Hi, Aisha, how are you? I'm very good, Martina. Thanks for having me on. How are you? Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Um, so today we would like to explore a bit more the social aspect of ESG uh, following uh, the recent report uh, you, you just published. And my first question is just to introduce the bit the topic. So what does it mean with social? So what the social aspect of ESG incorporate? Of course. So a global data, we have an ESG framework. And that dives into the different aspects of each factor, the E, the S, and the G. And the social factor we split into four subsegments: human rights, and that looks at things such as forced labor and low wages, diversity and inclusion, and that examines things like discrimination or lack thereof, hopefully, um, regarding gender, age, so on and so forth. Health and safety, which relates to employee, customer, supplier, and product health and safety, and animal welfare. And finally, community impact, which takes into account areas such as charitable donations and the displacement of communities. And these all come together to provide a holistic view of a company's performance in relation to the social factors of ESG. Thanks for clarifying it. That's really helpful to start with. And so the, the, the social factor is an aspect that companies should take into consideration, of course, but uh, I'm thinking that compared to the environmental aspect, for example, where you can measure um, carbon emissions, and waste, uh, the water use, for example. So here I feel that might be a bit trickier. So my next question is how can companies access their impact and performance on social factors? Um, no, you're absolutely right. It is a lot trickier, but companies can measure their performance internally. So they can report on these in their annual or sustainability reports, which I've loved reading for my research. Um, they can do things like measure gender diversity across their board or the number of employees injured in a given year in work-related incidences. Um, they can assess these impacts against their past performance. So for example, they can highlight how the proportion of women in leadership roles has hopefully <laughs> increased over the past few years to make a more level playing field. However, it's still beneficial for them to compare themselves against other companies in their industry to understand what the overall standard or expectations are. Um, there are a number of third-party corporations that allow them to do this, either by reporting on social factors or providing benchmarks to measure performance against. So these vary depending on the social factor. So for example, we have the Corporate Human Rights Benchmark, which is created by the World Benchmark Alliance and obviously, as the name suggests, looks at human rights. Um, we have the FTSE Diversity and Inclusion Index, which measures things um, such as diversity in leadership positions. And we have the B Corp Certification, which is an all-round mark of sustainability. And it's given to companies that are able to showcase that their impact on the community, the environment, and their workers is up to a certain standard. Great. So there are many ways to do so. And now I want to ask you a very wide question. So let's uh, let's try. So I want to ask you why it is important for them, for these companies to do so. That's a good question. Um, I think it's becoming increasingly important for companies to know how they're doing in ESG factors and also to improve where necessary for a few main reasons. So firstly, because consumers expect them to do so. Um, we've seen movements such as Me Too and Black Lives Matter, and those have shown that consumers, especially younger ones, are expecting companies to, to uphold certain values and to safeguard the welfare of everyone, but especially vulnerable parties or minorities. And this may impact a company's activities and social factors such as diversity and inclusion and human rights. Secondly, companies must ensure that their activities abide by relevant laws and regulations. So I've been really taken by the concept of moral progress, which in this instance is when a society updates its moral stance on a certain issue, and these are reflected in updated laws. So I'll give an example. Consumers recently have been rightfully furious at the fact that there is still forced labor occurring in supply chains. And this has led to legislation such as the US's Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act, which was passed back in 2021. And the act calls on companies to certify that the products they import from the Xinjiang region in China were not created using forced labor and has seen companies such as BMW be investigated under the act. 
So as some societies become more socially conscious, laws may change in accordance with this, and companies will obviously have to abide by these laws. Thirdly, companies that measure their performance and are transparent may win new business. So clients, suppliers, investors, they all have their own ESG obligations to meet, and they might be helped in doing so by working with companies that have great ESG performance tracking and reporting. And this will grow following greater regulatory focus on this area, such as with the EU's corporate sustainability due diligence requirements, which imposes a liability for failure to meet ESG standards. Finally, it's important for companies to assess their impacts and to aim to do better for the simple reason of altruism. They should want to, they should want to be socially responsible, they should want to have a positive impact on their communities, and they should want to ensure that they treat everyone from their employees to their customers with dignity, respect, and equality. When it comes to business, there is always inevitably discussion around profits, finances, the bottom line, what ESG does that I love so much is that it brings everything back to what matters, doing the right thing. Thanks so much, Aisha, for your insights. They're really, really interesting. And you can find the ESG social report link in the episode description. Thanks all for listening and from us in thematic intelligence. See you next time.